it's my pleasure to, to be here again this year, and many thanks to my colleague of the organizational committee to invite me to present uh, the Promovac strategy on the recent advance in the Promovac strategy and its uh, implementation as a program now in, in, in Quebec. So uh, we're going to, to see what lessons we could learn <coughs> from the implementation of the EMI program. EMI is for motivational interviewing in maternity wards uh, for the immunization of children. And uh, this program was implemented with the government of the, uh, the Ministry of Health in Quebec. So first of all, I, my only conflict of interest is to swim with Angus every year in the lake. And uh, we did not uh, again, so <laughs> see you. But we're, we wear swimsuits when we swim. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. <laughs> no conflict, actually, no conflict of interest. <laughs> so, and, and I'm going to, to start my presentation with a, with a story. Uh, we're going to have a workshop tomorrow with the power of storytelling. So I want to, to, to share with you the story of uh, Mary Ellen and its son, Toby, and uh, the story with Eric Bonman, who is a journalist from Stat News. Uh, Stat News, it's a website, a scientific website of the Boston Globe in the US. And Eric uh, called me, uh, me uh, this uh, summer to learn more about uh, the problem of strategy and the programs that we implemented in Quebec. And it spent two, uh, two days uh, this summer with us in Sherbrooke to uh, meet uh, parents uh, who receive the, the intervention, to meet the counselor, to meet my team, and also, also meet uh, Mary Ellen. And so uh, Toby uh, was born uh, extremely premature and he was hospitalized in my unit for five months. And when uh, he's going to discharge at home, an, uh, an evening, the evening before, uh, the nurses uh, in the unit called me and say, Arno, I'm very afraid because Toby is going to leave tomorrow. He's unvaccinated because his mother is an anti-vax mother. And uh, could you do something? Could you see this mother? Uh, could you see if you could do something? So. I couldn't say no, <laughs> and I, uh, it was a Monday evening, and after work, I go into the unit to meet uh, Mary Ellen and to have an open discussion uh, with Mary Ellen. Uh, I was not in war with Mary Ellen. Uh, she's not uh, fights on the website of the hospital uh, against me, and uh, we have uh, an open discussion uh, on vaccination, on Toby's vaccination, and I thought I will, I, I was totally clear with Mary Ellen that as a physician, I was completely afraid with an extreme premature infant who wasn't vaccinated. He has a lot of complications, he has a stomach, et cetera, et cetera, uh, to go to home uh, with no vaccination. And uh, Mary Ellen was an anti-vax mother who belonging to an anti-vax community uh, living in a very rural uh, population in, uh, in Quebec. So we have, I should be honest, a one hour discussion, not five minutes, not 10 minutes, but one hour discussion, open discussion about vaccination. And the, the, the day after, my colleague called me uh, and said, what did you say to the mother? Because we could vaccinate Toby this, uh, this day before leaving. And the mother called to the vaccination center of this region and organize all the vaccination of all his other children. So what did you say to this mother? And I hope at the end of my talk, we you, will be able to, to understand what I could say with the, this mother. So I think, first of all, uh, there is an information paradox in vaccination residency. As you know, already well know now, the traditional educational approach and to give more information, more facts, more facts about vaccine presentable disease and use a prescriptive language is ineffective to address vaccine hesitancy and worst, it could backfire and reinforce vaccine hesitancy. But when you're asking parents, what do they want for the communication about vaccination? Sorry, the answer, they wanted more information than they were getting. So what's wrong? To give information doesn't work, but parents want more information. But parents want more information, but balance information about vaccination benefits and harm. They want also information presented clearly and simply. 
information tailored to their situation and information in a good time. And they also want information by a, tr a trustful relationship with a healthcare worker. So maybe the question is not, should we provide information to parents? But how could we provide information to parents that makes sense for them, that reinforces the decisional process about vaccination? Resistance so sometimes arises from an interaction. And when a person doesn't feel listening or understood, uh, when he feels that the, his freedom to act is written, the relationship could be cause a struggle. And as clinicians, we often want to restore, resolve our patient's problem. It's called the writing reflex. We uh, adopt an expert role and we argue for the benefits uh, of, a, of a vaccine, of a situation. To, we tell the client how to behave and we inform without asking permissions. And so uh, it's counterproductive because to, to change to change a behavior is a step-by-step -step process. And you could, couldn't be to the situation that you don't want to vaccinate your child, you don't trust uh, to, uh, about immunization, directly to the situation to vaccinate your child. You should go step-by-step. -step. And if you go too quickly, you're going to develop a resistance with your patients. So what allow people to change? First of all, it should be a deliberate choice. The people should feel that it's a good time for him to change, and he should uh, feel the importance of the change and to have a confidence that he's able to change. And it's uh, the base of motivational interviewing. Motivational interviewing was uh, uh, described uh, 30 years ago by Mellor and Rinnick, they are psychologists in the context of addiction. And motivational interviewing is not only skills, as we often see, uh, yes, the skills are very important, but it's also very important is the spirit of motivated interviewing. Motivated interviewing use uh, a very partnership relationship with compassion and altruism. You are with the patient to help him to resolve himself his ambivalence, to help him to resolve his ambivalence, to make sense to the change and to make his decision and to his own decision. And you could also use the processes of motivational interviewing. First, you engaging the relationships to establish a trustful relationships. Secondly, you could focus what is the problem, what is the change. Uh, third, to the evocation phase, you could see with the patient the importance of the change and is it confident that he will be able to change. And finally, you could go to the planification and to see how he could act. But it's a step-by-step -step process, and if you are going too quickly, you are going to develop resistance and going not to work. So also, uh, with vaccination hesitancy, I think that uh, one intervention couldn't fill all the problem of the parents, and we should adapt the interventions according to the position of the level of vaccine hesitancy of the parents. Parents are on the continuum of vaccine acceptance, and you should adapt the goal of your interventions according to this level of vaccine hesitancy. If the parent is more or less hesitant, you could go to the planification of vaccination. But with more hesitant parents, you could only have an open discussion about vaccination. If not, you're going to develop resistance or you're going to lose the trustful relationship. So the Provovac strategy was based on this concept. Uh, there is a need for information uh, for parents. There is a need for early information because first vaccine starts at two months, and so parents should receive information in a good time to take the decision. It was based uh, also on the failure of traditional educational approach, and so to use a motivational interviewing approach to give those information to parents to make a decision about vaccination that makes sense for her. So the ProVac strategy uh, was developed to provide to parents an educational intervention at birth using mot a motivational interviewing approach in order to increase vaccine acceptance. So I'm going to present quickly the results uh, of the study that we have conducted first in Quebec. So we start with a, a court study in Eastern Townships. And we've, in this court study, we were able to demonstrate it, that if the parents receive an intervention we have an increase of the proportion of parents who have the intention to vaccinate by 50% uh, 50, 50 
of increase. We also follow the cohort uh, and the vaccine coverage of the infants in the cohort, and we are able to demonstrate it, that if parents receive the intervention, there is an increase in vaccination coverage in infants at three, five, and seven months. And more interesting, when we follow the cohort until the age of two years, there was still a remaining effect with an increase uh, uh, during the entire period of the zero to two years periods. And if parents receive the interventions, infants have 9% more chance to have a complete vaccination schedules during the zero to two years periods. So after we move to the provincial uh, randomized controlled trial in the main maternity wards in Quebec, and we uh, observe the same results. We, we observe in each maternity ward a significant increase in vaccination intentions in parents with a global increase of 12%. And we also uh, use the PACV score and observe a, a significant diminution of the uh, PACV score of 40%. <coughs> and uh, more interestingly, uh, there is a great impact of the high level of vaccine hesitancy uh, because before the intervention, we have 16% of the population with a high level of vaccine hesitancy, and after the intervention, uh, only still 5% of parents have a high level of vaccine hesitancy. So what works with this approach? We, uh, with the spirits of motivational interviewing and the counselor, we could establish a trustful relationships with the parents and the healthcare worker because the counselor is not directly involved in the vaccination. Uh, the parents receive information tailored to their needs with open question with the motivational interviewing skills the counselor are able to specifically respond to questions to parents and not to give unnecessary information and the information are given in a good time it's two months before the first vaccine so parents have time to take their decision so now this strategy moved into a governmental provincial uh, program. It was the AB program. And the goal of this program is to offer to all parents during the stay in maternity wards an open exchange of vaccination in order to provide the best protection while increasing immunization coverage for hot children in Quebec. So this program uh, was possible with a partnership with the Public Health Agency of Canada and the Ministry of Health uh, in Quebec. And the first phase of the program was to implement the strategy in the main maternity wards in Quebec, in the 13 main maternity wards, uh, which uh, occur more, more than 2,500 annual births. It represents more than half of the neonates in Quebec. And after the evaluation of this uh, first phase, the second phase is to implement this strategy in all maternity wards according to the result of the um, uh, evaluation of the first phase. So the aim of the evaluation was to assess the implementation and the impact of the program strategy uh, in a program in a real life. We use the implementation science methodology and we use uh, two uh, framework uh, the REM for rich effectiveness, adoption, implementation, and maintenance, and the consolidated framework of implementation research to explore the implementation itself. The first uh, strategic decision was to uh, use dedicated staff to make the intervention. So uh, we want uh, uh, staff uh, highly trained to have a highly knowledge about immunization and highly knowledge of motivational interviewing. So they receive a specific immunization training and they receive a motivational interviewing training adapted to the immunization context that we have previously uh, uh, developed for nurses in the eight internships. And we also use uh, an evaluation tool that we uh, develop also uh, a feasible evaluator tool, easy to use to evaluate if the counselor have uh, already have all the skills of motivational interviewing. The specific aims of the evaluation was to describe the implementation of the program, to identify the barriers and facilitators of, the, of uh, this implementation, and to assess the impact of the program of vaccine intention, vaccine hesitancy score, and vaccine coverage. So this is, I present you 
uh, Matthew, it was one of the vaccination counselor who met parents at birth. And uh, as we already see in the uh, presentation before, we make it easy, uh, timely, accessible. And I forgot the first so one. <laughs> Hugo, could you help me? You're not here? <laughs> easy, <laughs> attractive, social, timely. Yes, and attractive, because Matthew is very attractive and uh, very <laughs> visual. <laughs> So, uh, what are the results of uh, this uh, evaluation of the program? First of all, uh, which are we able to reach the population? During the first year of the program, more than uh, 36 uh, thousands of parents received the intervention, and uh, we able, uh, according to the total births on all maternity wards, to reach 73% of all the parents. The major reason not to be able to reach all the parents is there is some breakdown uh, of services in uh, several maternities because there is very small team of counselor uh, for the lowest maternity, only two counselor. And if there is one counselor lacking, there is a breakdown of service. But lots of maternity could be able to reach uh, 80 to 90% of the parents. On the working days of vaccination counselor, they were able to reach 94% of the parents, less in the neonatal units. There is a specific challenge with neonatal units. And where they be able to reach parents, the majority of parents received the interventions. Only 3% of parents did not receive the interventions. And the global refusal rate uh, was 1.6%. Only 1.6% of parents refused to receive the intervention. The counselor made an average of six to 10 interventions daily. And for four fatalities, the main uh, four uh, maternity wards in Quebec, it was more than 50 to 18 interventions, and it could be a challenge for these uh, uh, maternity wards. According to the effectiveness of uh, this program, uh, we have a significant impact of uh, parental vaccination intentions in each maternity wards and we have a global uh, increase of the vaccination intention, more than 10%, and we have similar results uh, as in the randomized controlled trial. We observed uh, this effect of a randomly selection of more than uh, 6,000 of parents that receive the program. According to the parental vaccination hesitancy score, we also see uh, a diminution of the high level of vaccine hesitancy that represents only 7% of the population of parents that receive the interventions. Uh, at the level of the mean of the parental vaccine hesitancy score, we also observe a significant decrease in each maternity ward uh, with a global decrease near than 30% of the mean of the vaccine hesitancy score. And it's also the same with the high level of vaccine, vaccine hesitancy. We could see there is some uh, variation, regional variation uh, of this level of vaccine hesitancy. But in each material world, we, could, uh, we will be able to significantly decrease the high level of vaccine hesitancy. Uh, we have some few first results of the impact on the vaccination coverage because it uh, was started only uh, one year ago, so we have only the results of the uh, three months vaccination coverage. And we observe in the comparing the pre-implementation period to the post-implementation period in the six region targeting by the program compared to the 12 regions where the program was not implemented, we have an increase of vaccination coverage at two months in the regions uh, implemented the coverage. And we uh, could see that this increase is underestimated because uh, in the six region, uh, the maternity ward represents only 70% 70, 70 of all the population. So we have this impact of 70% of the population in the six region where the program was implemented. So according to the adoption, uh, more than half of the facilities were able to implement the program at time in January. Uh, in January. Uh, it was very, very short uh, time to implement uh, the program. We have uh, the discussion with the ministry in the summer in 12-17, uh, uh, and we have also only four to five months to contact uh, maternity wards, to contact hospital direction, to build the learning 
uh, of motiv uh, motivational interviewing to build the, the training uh, of immunization to recruit the staff. So it was a very, very short period, but the majority of facilities were able to implement the program in the first few months. Only one Manatee Wards have some difficulties to implement the program. Uh, the majority of facilities reach more than the 73% of the parents. The, it was uh, due uh, mainly to the breakdown of service in four maternity, the four maternity who has less counselor with breakdown of service. And as I already say, uh, during uh, working days of counselor, they were able to reach the majority of the parents. For the implementation of the program, uh, we uh, have seen with the uh, the consolidated framework of implementation research. We have started uh, our implementation with the Promovac strategy, and we the strategy passed through the process of the implementation, and we're able to see at the end what are the main core component of the intervention and what should we should be adapt to the context and to the implementation. So uh, we start and finished with an intervention based based on motivational interviewing during the postpartum stay in maternity wards, but it's also in anatology, with dedicated staff, the counselor. But we have to change the training because the in-person training was very difficult to put in place because with the difficulties of recruitment, we have start with three uh, sessions of training and we have finished with six sessions of training because there were some difficulties during the period of recruitment. So we adapt the training with e-learning training and we develop e-learning training with specific coaching to be able to uh, reach uh, more than consider and to could be able to uh, adapt to the recruitment process. So there is some barriers and facilitators on the most important facilitators was a strong governmental support, uh, a local information support, and a very uh, positive uh, view of the program uh, in the manager, the counselor, and the feeling of belong belonging of, uh, of the counselor with the virtual community of practice. So we evaluate also uh, the vaccination counselor uh, in my training, and we're able to demonstrate that counselor acquired a uh, very uh, good level of motivational interviewing using the MyZ questionnaires that we have previously de developed. According to the maintenance of uh, the, the program, uh, we have a high level of parental sa satisfaction. Uh, more than 95% uh, uh, of parents appreciate to participate in the program and recommend to offer the intervention to the other parents, and more is percent 97% of parents uh, feel that the discussion respects their point of view. It's a major uh, quality of the use of motivational interviewing. And also, uh, mostly parents uh, uh, think that it's, it's a good time to receive the intervention. We have some difficulties to, when we visit maternity wards to say it's a good time to see parents because there is some difficulties uh, in staff to say, no, no, parents will be very tired, it's not a good time. But when we ask parents, it's a good time for them. And we, our previous study, we al already have those results that the parents are very happy to have this discussion in Matisse Awards. And so, uh, according to the maintenance of the program, we're going to develop, uh, develop an integrated uh, immunization and motivational interviewing e-learning training. And we are going to maintain the virtual community of practice of extension counselor. So, few key points to, to finish. So this program is based on an individualized approach and also to a respectful autonomy approach of the parents. But with this approach, we are able to have a global public health impact. It could be uh, counterintuitive at the beginning, but with this individualized approach, we could have a public health impact. We also have this discussion uh, yesterday evening with Angus and to the level of training, of the training. And it's a discussion to have a high level of training, but you could only have a few number of trainees. And we choose uh, in this uh, program to have very high level of training with the counselor. And the counselor uh, did, uh, do this job in Matthew Wards, uh, meets all the parents. But we could also, uh, if we want to have uh, lo uh, lots of trainees to, to be able in, uh, for example, in uh, practice care, frontline, 
we should diminish the level of training because we couldn't have a three, four, one week training for all the people. Second point, we should adapt the EMI training to the specific context of immunization. And we should adapt this training also according to the level of parental vaccination hesitancy. And for example, according to the process of motivational interviewing, according to the level of parental uh, vaccine hesitancy, you could uh, go with a high uh, process of planification and low level of evocation, but which we, in the case of uh, the contrary, you couldn't have a planification process very important. So you should adapt all the process on motivational interviewing skills according to the level of vaccine hesitancy. So what are the perspectives of this program? So we have seen that the core component of the interventions are, are uh, maintained. It's an intervention with dedicated counselor. We're using a motivational interviewing techniques and in maturity words, but we should adapt the training uh, on moving to uh, e-learning. Could this approach uh, uh, may have a change in the vaccination perception in the population? Uh, with this program, we're able to reach uh, approximately 2% of the Quebec population each year. So in 10 years, the program could reach 20% of the population that could reach mainly all the parents in the population. And could it be a sufficient critical mass population to change the vaccination perception in Quebec and to have a herd immunity about vaccination perception. Well, we know that anti-vax are only 0 to 0.2 percent, but they are very active, they are very visible, and to make war against them makes them more visible. And to immunize parents against the misinformation, maybe uh, this anti-vax could be less visible, less have less legitimacy and uh, parents could be th th therefore less uh, sensible to, to the <coughs> problem of the immunization. And maybe uh, we have seen with uh, the kids' boots that we should act very early, and prevention is to act before the problem happens. Though with this approach, we've approached the parents before uh, the misinformation can have, uh, have uh, power to them. Thank you for your attention.